although the movie is officially about catastrophe and so on, but it has this inner tension because the whole narrative interest is sustained nonetheless by this uh, melodramatic story so that although the catastrophe is within the narrative space of the film, objective out there, but the libidinal meaning of the catastrophe is defined with this libidinal. And you know which is for me with this, I will end again, I announce it. Uh, the author, which now he moves in a different direction, but for a long time he was playing this game. That's my very simplistic, but I think I'm right, reading of the most of the early films of uh, Steven Spielberg. What is E.T.? He's a marriage couple mediator. I think it's absolutely <laughs> crucial that you remember at the beginning, this is a divorced family. Father is in Mexico and it's always traumatic, shall we call him in to Mexico and so on. Father abandoned them. At the end, you remember what is the final scene of the movie? E.T. going home. I hate that freak. I mean, if you ask me, I would like to squash <laughs> with my boots that freak. But e why can E.T. go home? Because among the scientists who are bad, you notice one is the good scientist. And when E.T.'s ship is leaving, he is already holding his hand around mother's shoulders and so on. So at the libidinal level, it's really the boy's dream how to reestablish family, how to pass from bad father to good father. And if you use this as a clue, incredible things are discovered, like Schindler's List. It's clearly Liam Neeson's children, first he's a bad father exploiting Jews, he turns into a good father. Up to, for example, you remember uh, uh, the uh, War of the Worlds. The whole problem is Tom Cruise begins as a bad father at the end through helping the children, blah, blah, he turns into a good father. And I think even Jurassic Park 1 has this subtle logic. I think it's that O'Neill, how is it called, the, the New Zealand yeah. actor. Uh, Sam, Sam Neill, yeah. He is at the beginning the bad father, you know, scaring the children and so on. And through that threat, he turns into a good father. There are many details which point in this direction. So I like reading Spielberg in this way. The movies can be about Holocaust, Auschwitz, about this, about that, the end of the world. But the true story is the restoration of paternal authority. And you cannot take this away. If you take this away, you get a flat, boring movie. It's just something which appears as secondary, but it's absolutely crucial to how we relate to that movie. Thanks.